Hi, I'm Mike. Life for a cow on the ranch is a bit more complicated than we might imagine. And when it comes to their diet, it's always changing. And with the season, we find we have to change with it. Today, we take a look at a cow's calendar, how their lives change throughout the year, and how that can affect what happens to the herd and our bottom line. It's all coming up on our Wyoming Life. <laughs> Since June, the cows have been on their own when it comes to daily feed. Once the grass starts to grow on the prairie in the late spring, it's hard to keep them interested in the hay that we've been providing during the winter. We call that chasing the grass. And when the cows stop coming in for feed, they start to stretch their legs, moving away from the comfort and the safety of the main ranch and towards the pasture of their dreams. All of this happens in the late spring, in uh, what we consider the, the start of the grazing season for the cow. From here on out, until they start getting fed again in the winter, they're foraging for their own food. But like any good parent, we hang out in the wings as they move away from home once again, and we keep an eye on what and how they're doing. On the ranch, we have to live by two calendars. One is the traditional Gregorian calendar. That's the calendar that's used by most of the world. With it, we can track days, weeks, months, years, and even seasons. But more importantly, we can track when things need to happen, or more specifically, events that dictate when things need to happen. We can expect grass to start growing in mid-May. We know that our last frost date has a 50% chance of happening by May 20th. And by October 1st, we should expect our first hard frost, or a temperature below 25 degrees or so. Of course, knowing these dates are essential, but another calendar that we work off here on the ranch is called the cow calendar, or the cow production cycle. This calendar is completely based on a cow's yearly cycle on the ranch. It can start anywhere, but usually we start the calendar at calving. And if we look at the cow's calendar like a clock, that's 12 o'clock. So after a cow has her calf, we enter the postpartum period of about 90 days. Most cows won't come into heat until 30 to 45 days after calving, longer if nutrition is poor. So it's very important at this stage that cows are getting all the vitamins, minerals, and protein that they need. Cows are lactating during this period, making nutrition even more important. The cows don't only have to lactate, they have to repair their reproductive tracts, resume heat cycles, increase activity, and all of that takes energy. And during that time, we wanna make sure that the cows are getting a higher protein level. It's going to differ based on your geographical location, but this is why we choose to calve when we do. After calving, we can supplement feed with a higher protein of hay for a little while until the grass starts to grow. By that time, they're out on pasture. That new green grass is some of the highest protein level of grass that we'll ever see here on the ranch. After the 90 days in the postpartum stage, cows are then lactating and pregnant for the next 90 days. This is where they are now. And at the end of this 90-day cycle, the calves will be weaned off their moms and shipped off. That'll happen in mid-October. But for now, we'll de we're dealing with a whole new environment that the cows are living in. The summer is over, fall is taking hold. We've had less than two inches of rain in the last two months, and the prairie is slowly drying up. Fire danger is high. The cows aren't receiving anywhere near the same nutrition from the grass that they got just over a few months ago. Of course, there's really no way to know for sure the nutrition level of your grass that the cows are eating. That's unless you have it tested. Labs like Midwest Laboratories are essential for cattle producers who have to make sure that their cattle are performing in tip-top shape. Every bit of supplement you feed to your cow costs money and cuts into the profitability of the ranch. And without testing, you may be wasting money. Any excess minerals are released with urine and excess protein, well, ask any cattleman about blowback from a cow and they'll tell you where that protein goes. The great part is that you don't have to test your forages continually. You know your soil, you know your weather better than anyone. 
start taking samples at certain times of the year, track your weather, and start a spreadsheet. You can actually watch how weather, rain, heat, all that can affect protein and the mineral content of your natural grasses. Once you know that, a cow in this pregnant and lactating stage, she requires about 8% protein. Then you can make an informed decision if you need to supplement their feed with additional protein sources, be it cake or lick tubs or whatever you choose to do. Here on the ranch, we consult with our vet and we know that this time of year, our protein content of the grass is dwindling day by day. We also know that cows have reached their peak lactation and their milk production is decreasing. The cows are pregnant but fetal growth is at a minimum right now and doesn't add much to their requirements. However, they are still very active. They're moving constantly, and with the lower nutrition level of the grass, they might need a bit of a boost. Although, most cows will actually lose weight during this period. We also have their calves to think about, and the weight that we need them to be at at sales time. Calves gain weight at the rate of about two pounds per day. We want our calves to wean at about 500 pounds or so, and we also want to wean them at the end of this 90-day period. All of this has to align, like the stars in some sort of romantic movie, and the trick is to get it to all happen at the same time. This is a creep feeder. It's a small feeder that's designed to only feed calves. Only calves can fit inside, and their moms are left, well, without. What we feed them inside the feeder can differ. Sometimes we want to put on weight fast. They make a special program feed to do that, feeds like calf growers. But we've also found that we can usually get away with just a grass or a grain-based feed like oats, and sometimes corn, to get these calves up to a weight that we want to sell at. Today, we're adding crimped oats to the feeder. The conversion of feed to weight for the calves can differ based on what you're feeding, from three to 12 pounds of feed for each extra pound of gain. Based on your feed cost, you can decide if that's worth it. All creep feeding does is come down to the cost of gain. Most years, our cost of gain is pretty close to break even. But more importantly for us, creep feeding can help out a poor milking cow. Calves, whose moms don't give the best milk, may eat more feed to make up for it. And by paying attention to calves that always seem to be around or in the feeder, we can tell whose moms are in need of an evaluation of their performance in the herd. By using a grain-based creep, we're also limiting the costs and keeping control of the protein levels given to the cows. Also at this stage, we make sure that the cows have free access to mineral in the form of lick barrels, and of course, as always, salt and trace minerals. <laughs> so this is the style of uh, mineral feeder that I like to use. Uh, it's big, the cows can see it from a long way away. They know what it is, it's orange. I don't know what brand it is, it's big and orange. I don't know, maybe it's Home Depot brand, but it is the type of feeder that Gilbert liked out here. It's the type of feeder that I like. We can move this from field to field. The cows can look right at it. They know exactly what it is. They know it's their mineral feeder. Some people, uh, me included, have been forced to uh, throw blocks on the ground or put them in, in dishes or, or lick barrels and that kind of thing. Uh, the problem is that I found that cows really don't know where they are until they just stumble upon them. Then they find them, they'll lick on them for a while, they'll leave and then they'll forget where it's at. So with these, at least they know that uh, the big orange thing means salt and trace mineral. Soon the ranch will be entering the gestation stage of the cow calendar. This is the 100 or so days after the calves are weaned from their moms. Mom's energy needs will be reduced by about 25%. Protein requirements will drop as well. And it's the best time to add some of the weight that the cows have lost over the past couple of months. Cows are still pregnant, but fetal growth is still slow. And the cow's activity actually decreases. This is also when cows are voluntarily eating the lowest amounts. So we have to make sure that we take the supplement to them if we want them to gain weight. Luckily, this stage is timed out when we're feeding during the winter, and activity is expected to be way down anyway. After all that, we come to a stage that we call pre-calving, 50 to 60 days before their calves are born. The most 
critical time of the year for the cow and for us. Energy and protein requirements increase by up to 25%. Fetal growth is amazingly fast, and a calf will gain up to 60 pounds during this last 50 days. Keep in mind that a newborn calf is only gonna weigh between 70 and 100 pounds to start with. Cows are preparing for lactation, and throughout all this, feed intake actually goes down because the calf is taking up so much room inside the cow. Feed, supplements, protein, mineral, and all the good stuff are required to be in top notch. But that's a ways down the road still. The, the cow's calendar is moving right along, as we expect it to, and so is ours. September is winding down to an end. Soon, snow will fly, our lives will shift gears once again, and priorities will change. But at the core, everything is just about one cow, her internal timer, ticking down to that one day when her calf hits the ground. Thanks for coming along. Be sure to subscribe. We have a lot more coming up for the ranch and the month of October is always busy for us. Next week, we'll be moving the bulls, sorting them off of the cows, moving them back towards home. Hunting season starts very soon. And we'll also, well, the ranch's one big paycheck of the year is just a few weeks away. And we're gonna head to auction. We're gonna take you along with us as we continue to explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. I'll see you again soon. In the meantime, check out the website, rwyomonglife.com. Sign up for our weekly newsletter where you can get all the behind the scenes and direct access to the ranch. Until we see each other again, have a great week and thanks for joining us in our Wyoming life.